Today we take an inside look into the struggles behind employees and third-party contractors affected by the recent economic decline and budget cuts in the US space program. Following one of the last space shuttle liftoffs, Mary C. Matthews for Transport Workers Union of America reports from Cape Canaveral, Florida. Working at the Cape, when, on some of the launches, you get close enough to the launches that your pants legs actually will rattle. I remember as a teenager growing up here watching the Apollos go off. I was standing on the banks of the Indian River, 17 miles away. When that rocket went off, it vibrated me off the ground. This local will represent members both on the NASA side and the Cape Canaveral Air Station side. On the shuttle side, we represent people who deal with ordnance uh, with the vehicle. Um, searchlight and generator support. On the Air Force side, we deal with just unmanned uh, rocketry. We have mechanics, electricians, air conditioning, communication techs, supply techs. We have been out there for now 52 years at the Space Center as, as the union, and actually the first union to ever be brought onto the Space Center. This is Complex 17B. This is the uh, mobile service tower that uh, launches the Delta II rocket. This complex has launched all of the uh, GPS satellites that we use on our phones, our navigation systems, and, and definitely what the uh, military uses to protect us. We bring the core vehicle in, and then we lift uh, three solid motors at a time and mate them to the rocket. And this is the mount that the uh, core vehicle sits on. This is the launch table that it, it actually launches from. We maintain the tower, the grounding systems, the compressed air. We have hydraulic platforms out there, low voltage panels. We also maintain the elevators, the cranes. Check the rope. Make sure it hasn't stretched. This lifts the second stage motor with the Delta II Heavy. I'm a crane operator and we do support for the shuttle. Our part is for recovery of the boosters and the ships that uh, support that endeavor. The shuttle has two solid rocket boosters. They're extremely large. Freedom Star and Liberty Star is uh, two vessels that go out prior to a shuttle launch, roughly 150, 180 nautical miles off of the shore, uh, wait for a splashdown for the boosters. When they retrieve from the water, they come back to a place called Hangar AF. And it has to be reconfigured, and then the parachute reels have to go on and off. A, a crane has to be set on it. Refurbish it, paint it, and send it back out of state where they eventually put it back together and it's reused. We stand by for rocket launches in case there was a mishap or they have anything else that they need us on the structure platforms for. They deal directly with uh, flight support and mission support uh, up until the, uh, the point where they, they can go on a pad and rescue the astronauts. Well, the M113 is basically an armored vehicle. They're set up in the vehicle uh, in a safe distance. And usually less than a mile away. Um, and that's just something they support from there, so if something should happen before the shuttle launches, they'll go ahead and take care of it there. We're actually the only fire department that I know of that act is actually responsible for rockets, ships, um, structural and aircraft. They have a very tough job. Uh, proud to represent that group. Right now, our shuttle program launches and returns as a glider. The Constellation program is going back a few decades and is essentially like old rocketry where they have a capsule at the top. Astronauts are returned back to Earth via parachutes into an ocean landing. There is a proposed budget from the Obama administration to cut and completely underfund the new Constellation program. Anywhere from six to 10,000 jobs that could be cut and lost within the next 12 to 16 months. You learn your skills, you practice your skills, you become trained, and then when you find that you're no longer needed, then you have to go someplace else. I think we're going to see a loss of talent, a loss of skills in both uh, management and uh, workers. Everything that's virtually in your home has been dealt with or touched and developed by NASA. Science, education, medicine have all come out of the space program. Your televisions, your satellites, your, your defense system. For every tax dollar that goes into the space program generates seven dollars return into the private industry. The tourist industry is one of our biggest industries, and they come here to see the shuttle, and then, of course, to see the visitor center. I don't see us going forward until this budget issue is addressed. I know it's still going to go before the Congress, and I hope that uh, the TWU is on the forefront of discussing this with every politician that we could possibly get in front of and let them know we need their support. <laughs> We're at uh, the Banana Creek viewing site, the home of the Saturn V. Behind me is Complex 39B. Uh, currently, where the shuttle Endeavor is about to launch. Seven, 
six. When you back up and you see that vehicle, you know, be a success, you feel like part of it. Five. Four. The hair still stands up on the back of my neck. It's a joy to go to the top of the tower and uh, and watch it from there. It's a, it's a better view than anybody in the world probably gets. The night launch is. You know, you, you got to realize that, that it's, it's dark, and usually you'll see a glow, like the sun coming up. As that thrust gets higher and higher and higher, then the, the darkness becomes daylight. That is one big candle burning in the sky. And you know that there's astronauts that are risking their lives right on that rocket. All the members at TWU support them in one way or another. And, uh, it's, it's special to us, very special. Even though that for us is like a typical day at the office, it's still really something.